Okay guys, we're going to discuss the benefits of raising Caternix and Bob White or meat production. Right here we have a northern Bob White. It's a young male. This is uh, 20 weeks old. And this is Caternix quail, Pharaoh. And she is full grown, half the age of this guy right here. And you can you can see the size comparison. Uh, I took pictures of their weights. I weighed them. It was a little difficult. I fabricated this little cage here to weight them. So we'll go off camera and we'll push her off camera and come back on and show you how to clean them and final weights. All right guys, we dispatched the birds off camera because I don't think YouTube would like it. I will warn you that there will be blood and guts, so if you're not prepared to see it, then this is not the video for you. So we have dispatched Caternix here, and we have dispatched Bob Whites here. And Lane is gonna help me here. We're gonna skin these out, and we'll pluck the a couple of them through the automatic plucker so you can see the differences plucking would only be better if you want like a appearance if you're looking to sell like a clean bird people want to look at that if you're doing it just for you i just recommend just skinning them out you can do it real quick and it's not bad you want to do it man so Now what Lane's doing right here is he's cutting the backbone out to spatchcock it. It's easier for him to just spatchcock it as opposed to trying to clean the inside out with his, his fingers, trying to dig those lungs and stuff out. It sometimes can be difficult. So Lane's pulling all the insides out. Go ahead and prep some for the plucker. I like to cut the wings and feet off before I stick it in the plucker. So I'll back up and say some of these we typically dispatch by cutting the heads off and a few of these I tried a method I learned at QuailCon this weekend, the bloodless call. It, I think you really have to do it to figure out how. I messed up on a couple of them. I 
think it's more of a feel thing than being explained how to do it. It's uh, basically cervical dislocation, it's basically breaking the neck. There's no blood involved. They feel a little squeamish, but still want to experience it. leg here. I like to put it in ice water and rinse everything off after. Scoot you over a little bit. There you go, sir. What did I do? Um, I made a hole in the skin to um, get to this part. And what, what is that part called? That is the breast? Yeah. And, um, it makes it a lot easier to pull off the feathers. And the, the clean skin. inside? Yep. So we're going to run these through the electric plucker, I like to put them in, turn a little water on. skin here. All right, this is the bob white and this is a turnix quail. Skin's a little torn. Happens sometimes in the plucker. Um, which is which? This is a bob white and this is the turnix. doing here like we're gonna gut them but it's you know it's 90 degrees outside so before we gut them we we'll drop them in ice water and then once we finish skinning everything then we pull them out and we'll go ahead and gut them at that time the pigs know that they're getting fed soon with all the extras we don't waste it so we'll just feed all the leftovers to the pigs. All 
Hey guys, so since we uh, just had some new activity on our channel, those of you who have, haven't met Lucas, this is Lucas, our 16 year old. I think he likes to eat quail more than take care of them or butcher them. That's the only reason why he's here. He's a big help. He's the one who fed and took care of all our animals while we're at QuailCon. Not much of a camera, but he, he's always out here helping. He's working on this last one here. Mr. Lane's finishing up with this one. Looks like he's having a hard time. Yeah. Let Daddy help him here. Oh. These bob whites are young for bob whites, so skin's real tender, everything's just a little tender. That's okay. We're not too worried about the feathers at this point until we clean out the insides and then we'll do our final cleaning on it. Yeah. The, our yard rooster likes to make his appearance and then the other roosters like to join in on the fun, as you could hear. All right, guys, we'll clean up our table here and get ready for cleaning out the insides. Okay, guys, we're back. Got a few quail here. We're going to show how to clean out the insides. I like to cut this bottom side out. I guess we could call it the vent area. And it'll make for a bigger hole. <laughs> yeah, of course the roosters want to do their calling. So I just, I have big fingers. I pass one finger in there, you see get all that stuff out the inside you have a hole up here kind of open it up and then come by with the holes rinse out the inside it gets pretty much everything out of there I know there was some discussion about how do you clean the inside out leaving the bird whole without spatchcocking it with big fingers. So now we take these birds and we're gonna put them in a different ice bag for 24 hours to get rid of rigor mortis and then we'll package them up and put them in the freezer after Lucas gets to eat a couple. It's the only reason why he's here with us today, to eat. He's a pretty good chef. He likes to cook wildlife, fish, birds, We don't really save any of the insides of the quail just because we raise pigs so it's extra food for them and the hearts and stuff for the quail are really small so it's really not beneficial for, for us to keep them but you can you have dogs you can feed them to dogs if you know you could dry them you could eat them you could there's a bunch of stuff to do if you want zero waste ours is not waste it just ends up as pig food pig food Yes, we hear you. We hear you. Hey, buddy. Finish up with that one. So, Lynn's going to finish up with the last quail. Now, 
tell you while Lane's finishing up with his. I'm wearing gloves. Lane wears gloves sometimes. It's all a matter of preference. And we'll feed it to the pigs instead. All right, guys. So we finished up here, and well, Lane's still finishing. So I'll save this on the Caternix versus Bob White for self-sufficiency in meat. <laughs> Yard rooster wanted to join. I would say Caternix quail would win over Bob White for self-sufficiency. It's just you're gonna get 300 eggs a year, and you get way more meat compared for raising age. A 10 week old quail, Caternix quail, compared to a 20 week old Bob White quail, you have live weight is double on the Caternix. They are a messier bird, but definitely better for meat. You get more meat, more eggs, and they just grow faster. I mean, ultimately, the decision's up to you. I prefer Caternix quail for meat. Bob White quail or Great birds to listen to. They're great songbirds. I, I like to raise them for fun more than anything. It's good if you want to train dogs and, you know, real flighty birds when they get out. Keeping that handy if you own Bob White Quail. So we're going to rinse Lane's Quail off here. Right, guys we'll see you next time don't Bye. forget to like and subscribe Baby.